Welcome back to Inside Iraq. Now we are joined from Amman by Yust Hilterman, a Middle East project director of the International Crisis Group. Yust, what lies behind the difference in the assessment between the Iraqis and the Americans? The Americans believe the insurgency, the resistance is about 20,000 strong, while Iraq's chief intelligence officer, Mohammed Abdullah Shahwani, he thinks they are about 40,000 strong, supported by about 160,000 of popular masses. Well, I don't know, but uh, in, the ca in cases of armed conflict, you usually have conflicting accounts as to numbers of, uh, of the opponent and, or of your side. And in my view, um, we're facing an Iraqi insurgency that is homegrown and that has widespread support in the Sunni Arab community. It can easily recruit new members because the resentment is so high. And so we can talk about 10,000 armed fighters or 20,000 or 40,000. In the end, it doesn't really matter. I don't think you can militarily defeat uh, a national movement and a resistance movement that has such an amount of uh, homegrown su of uh, yeah, do domestic support, popular support in their own areas. And yet, Ellen, that's exactly the new policy as it's unfolding right now. 21,500 are going to Iraq, 17,000 of them are going to Baghdad, four and a half are going into the very hotbed of the insurgency in the Ambar Ramadi area. And Yus tells us it's not winnable. Well, I don't think the logic of the president's new plan is to take on the insurgency as the only objective. I think the real logic is to try to bring some peace and stability to the city of Baghdad, give people more confidence, really just impose in a way a law and order or curfew kind of situation where people will feel uh, that they can go about their daily lives. And out of that, you build a political process that would perhaps eventually uh, convince the insurgents to try another path. But I respect what Yost has said, that the anger and the resentment is very deep and is not likely to go away overnight. I don't think the American administration has any illusions that they will be able to change the psychology of the insurgency overnight. Saad, so far the Americans and the British, they have failed in convincing the insurgency to draw drop their arms and join the political process. And yet they believe that the very uh, goal of the insurgency is to drive a wedge between the government as installed by the Americans and the masses. Have they managed to do that? Well, you you're, you're keep on s insisting on the term insurgency uh, up to now, Jasim. Anyway, I don't think uh, that uh, they have done any effort to bring the resistance into the political process. Nothing was done in this respect. But what if, they have if, done if, is if, if they ask well, them, just if me, they ask them, will they accept? Them, well, this is up to them. I don't know. I'm not the member of them, but I don't think that uh, there is a little or a single positive. Uh, uh, initiative made by the government or by the Americans that could uh, 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 win the or, or win the support of the of the resistance. We are still speaking in sectarian terms. We are still speaking about marginalizing everybody. We are still still uh, uh, terming people who are not cooperating as traitors or supporters of Saddam Hussein. The debathification law is still working. The uh, uh, the army is still away and nobody is bringing the army back. The police force, old police force, is still away and all and there is also another problem the economic problem of the Iraqi people the suffering of the Iraqi people in the economic and social field are not taken care of the the the, the report of mr. Baker uh, uh, was was very clear about this point but nothing is done on the economic or social life people are not really feeling that they are living their own life or feeling uh, uh, perhaps uh, that's a combined in measure to, of to, to incompetence and corruption on the part of the Iraqi government Saad but used well, well, the corruption, well, uh, the, the corruption, uh, well, the corruption is on the side of the American people as well. You have heard about what what happened to the old minister of electricity, who has a gen, uh, an American passport and who was accused of corruption. He uh, he now lives outside. Who is going to put these corrupt uh, corrupt people into prison? They are all having their own British and American and other passports and living abroad. So what what could you expect the people? Uh, why do you expect the people to trust? All the more reason. Let me ask the following question the to you. The insurgency are refusing to deal with any government installed in Baghdad because simply they look at it as illegitimate. 
if that does not change, can you see it going on and on and on until the Americans simply they are just fed up and they just leave? Is that in the cards? Well, I think it's very likely that uh, uh, as long as there is no a serious attempt to bring about a political compromise between all the groups and leaders in Iraq, including the insurgents, uh, the conflict will only uh, get worse over time. And, uh, and I think that is extremely dangerous and we should try to prevent it. And the only way to prevent it is not only uh, to push back the insurgents and the Shiite militias in Baghdad, while that is very important, to create uh, pressure, but there should be a serious political initiative. And I have seen nothing in the Bush plan that suggests that there is a willingness to go beyond working with the current government. The current government is too weak to do anything and it is a party to the sectarian conflict. The only way forward is for the international community with the United States to come in in a multilateral way with the neighboring states to basically impose a peace, to force the various groups in Iraq to get together and to compromise on the key issues that divide them, federalism, oil revenue sharing, debathification, and a number of other issues. Uh, Brigadier General in Cairo, if this is not winnable militarily, why does the Iraqi government believe that it can win it? If the most powerful army in the world is not capable of doing it and banking on the political process, why do you think Baghdad thinks it can do it? Uh, I think that uh, this gover uh, government will play a very bad game. Uh, they will use the, this uh, surge uh, increasing in uh, uh, American troops. Uh, they will took it uh, just screaming Al Qaeda in any places in uh, in, uh, in Iraq, and she will lead, it will lead uh, this American uh, guys to make a massacre. So you, I, I want you to uh, re mention with me what uh, what was happening in uh, in Nagaf uh, in 31 January. Uh, two tribal uh, Shia Arab Shia tribals. Uh, uh, have been inflicted by many casualties. Uh, there is no Qaeda. There is uh, just uh, about screaming uh, from Baghdad government that this is Al Qaeda. Uh, as soon as possible, uh, American troops uh, they came. They uh, shooting them. I think that uh, uh, this government, uh, pro Iranian government, will play a very very uh, bad game. And I think that America will not win this, uh, this uh, battle. Since you course, mentioned Iran, uh, Brigadier General, let me go to Saad Jawad and ask him, in, in his opinion, to what extent the confessionalism posed by Bremer on the First Council, bringing a quote of Shiite, uh, Kurds, uh, Turkmen, Sunnis, help empower the, the resistance, telling them that this is nothing more than a confessionalism? Well, let me say something. I would like to answer your, your question. That I, I'm, I'm very thankful for you for this question because I wanted to comment on this one. I think uh, there is a misunderstanding of the Iraqi society abroad. Now, everybody says that the Shias are governing and the Sunnis are marginalized and the Kurds are so on. This is not true. What we have in Iraq now, we have Sunni, Shi'i, Kurds, Christians who are cooperating with the Americans, who came with the Americans, and who are ruling, uh, ruling in the name of, of the Americans. And we have in the resistance and in the oppositions, uh, in the opposition, Shia and Sunni and Kurds and Christians and everywhere. I think you have heard what happened in Nasriya and in Karbala and in Najaf the other time. These are only signs of the Shia resistance to the American policy. What the Americans tried to create that or divide the country into Shi'i, Sunni, Kurds, Christian society did not succeed. They have succeeded for a while, that is the but case, not for long. Uh, Dr. Saad, let me ask the final question to Ellen Leibson. Was it a comedy of error that led to the situation right we are right now? Or as most of the Arabs, you know, they believe that this is, was all planned. Did the Americans botched it or they planned it? I think there were a, a series of mistakes of both tactical level and strategic level uh, in the decision to go to war, the way the decision was made, and the way the, the policy was implemented. It's clear that the United States was experimenting with different concepts once it was on the ground in Iraq, and it was revealed how little insight we had into how Iraqi society would react to this change. I, I hesitate to use the word comedy because I think it's much closer to tragedy. Thank you to all my guests. To find more information about the program as well as to send us your comments, please go to aljazeera.net forward slash English. 
Join me next week when we have another look inside your iPhone. Goodbye.